All right, we're at a campsite here in Katy's, Kentucky, and um, I've been doing some reading and studying. Um, we're right close to the lake, as you can see. This is called Energy Lake. Energy Lake in Golden Pond, Kentucky. And uh, this is a beautiful campsite. I've set up my Elacraft KX3, and we're gonna have some chat with uh, a dear friend of mine from North Carolina, Jimmy, KB4GKI. Um, and he and I work together on <clears throat> on HF bands quite a bit. The antenna I'm using this morning is the Bandhopper 2, 20 to 40 meter. And um, it's, uh, you can see the instructions there. The center, 18 to 20 feet, which is up in the tree up there somewhere. And uh, so... Um, I actually have two of these. I ordered one and it got lost in shipping. So I ordered another one, hoping to get a refund on the first one. And uh, while I was waiting on the second one to come, the first one arrived. So <laughs> I've got two of them. But anyway, that's what I'm using this morning the band hopper uh, clip dipole. I don't know if you can see. The tagline from antenna is right there. And the end of the antenna is about 8 to 10 feet off the ground. We go up to the apex up here, which you can't see, I know. Um, but it's a good 30 feet up, 20, 28 to 30 feet up. And then there's my drop line to hold it in place. And here's my feed line using this real small coax for QRP and then the other the other leg goes over here down to about eight feet off the ground so this is a clip dipole and I've got it wired for 40 meters so that's what we're going to try here with Jimmy this morning in fact you can see the clip right here I think uh, let's see if I can get it in the view for you. Uh, well, <laughs> hard to see on the camera. Let's see if I can zoom in. Right there in the middle. Right there is the clip. I can get it in the sunlight. Or whatever. Yeah, there's the clip right there at the tree. And you uh, connect or disconnect those alligator clips to um, change the band from 40 to 20. So I actually tuned this antenna on 80 this morning and was listening on 80 meters and it was working great. The uh, heat pump is running, so I'm going to go in there and turn that off, and then we'll continue the video. All right, I've got my coffee uh, warming up here. I'm use a French press, and we'll uh, get another pot going here in a minute. Let's see if we can get a hold of Jimmy. It's light, but it's good. Oh, I was going to tell you, we've had an inch and six tenths of rain. Uh, since it started, one inch and six tenths. Good grief. Uh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to rain on your parade, but it's absolutely drop dead gorgeous here this morning. It's probably 66 degrees, 68 degrees here. Air is dead calm, not a cloud in the sky, clear skies, sun peeping through the trees. The lake is calm like glass and uh, there's no activity here at the campground so it's just it's completely quiet all we hear is birds over maybe we'll get to see some sunshine next week from what they're talking uh, got a few static crashes on the frequency I don't think there's any storm supposed to be in the area but hear a static crash once in a while well, I'm assuming that's what it is 
Glad you got the sunshine. Uh, you wouldn't want to be here with all this water. Now, we've done the camping trips before when it rained the whole time, so thankfully we've got some beautiful weather to cooperate this morning. Um, I'm recording this conversation on the iPhone, and I'll uh, post it on YouTube for you so you can hear how good your audio is coming in on the Elecraft. I do have the preamp turned on. Yeah, I do have the preamp turned on, and... Um, but I don't have any filtering. There's no filtering, and so when I when I let go of the key, the the noise level drops to very very low. Okay. One of the things that I really love about the Elecraft is that it's so feature rich for such a tiny little radio. I tried uh, earlier uh, in the day at five watts using just the internal battery pack and made a couple of contacts. This is about a 500 mile jump between Jimmy and I. I will do that, Jimmy. I'll uh, I'll send you a link to the video. Um, yeah, YouTube is a little funny about notifications on subscribers and all of that, but. Um, Anyway, if you don't have a problem with me posting this publicly so that the other amateur radio enthusiasts can hear it, I'll do that. They would, uh, these are usually pretty popular. This is N4KRO. Oh, right. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, we just wish we could see the sun again. <laughs> I tell you what, it has done some more kind of rain in here. I believe it's rained a bush plumb off of the back porch. Well, I wanted to say, uh, please be sure and tell all my buddies uh, good morning if you talk to them today. Um, I miss chatting with you guys on two meters. I don't guess there'd be any attempt, any uh, uh, reason for me to try to hook up my external two meter antenna and talk to you guys. I know that wouldn't happen. I don't have a ferrite bead on this battery setup, and that could be some RF uh, or some interference from the battery pack, Jimmy. Oh yeah, but when it's not in there, uh, you're, you'll go up, uh, the audio is just real good and solid, and then it'll kind of fall back down. But uh, did you get your antenna up any higher in the tree this morning? Yeah, I switched the orientation and I took it up another five or six feet. The ideal for this antenna is 18 to 20 feet. They said six meters, no more than six meters at the top. So I'm, I'm a full 25 to 30 feet up. I probably need to drop it back down just a little bit. Okay, I believe you said uh, 25, 30 feet up. Well, that's usually as much as you need, but uh, when, it, <clears throat> when it goes to working, it works great, and then all of a sudden it'll just change, and it could be a little bit of RF. Well, the, the antenna uses this real tiny little, what is that, 174, and uh, you'll see it on the video. It's real small... Uh, feed line and of course on low power that's not really a problem but when you get in 10 20 watts it starts to uh, it starts to impede the signal just a little bit yeah it'd be interesting to see what this one sounds like what kind of signal do you have on there about an s5 s6 or something like that no you push consistently s10 S9, S10, noise level here is about a 5, 
and you're well above the noise, you're into about an S9, S10 uh, consistently. That's what counts. S10. Roger, you are S10, S10, S10. Over. Uh, you got kind of light on the audio. I caught, I caught the over, but I didn't catch anything else. Okay, Jimmy, you're running here about an S10. You're running an S10, S10. Um, so your signal is good and strong uh, coming up to Kentucky. Yeah, your signal, your signal level getting uh, getting out here uh, or coming into here is is an S10, Jimmy. You have an S10 on your signal. Okay, I didn't catch that one, but uh, and that's strange because last night, man, we were you were coming in here. Real good audio-wise. Didn't have much signal, but you had great audio. <clears throat> okay, Jimmy, I'm going to bump the compression up. Is that any better? Okay, I'm going to try to uh, just voice over this section right here. We tried a, a few more times and just couldn't get through. So a couple of takeaways from this outdoor portable installation. First of all, the RG174 is probably the worst kind of wire you could use in a portable setup. Even though it's small and portable, it really kills your signal. Uh, at 10 megahertz, it, it takes you down 3.3 dB. So that's one factor that we are really dealing with here. All right, Kent. Yeah, if you want to try it again tonight, say around seven o'clock or so, or before supper, I usually get back up to around six thirty. Six six thirty. So I, all I gotta do is flip a couple of switches and turn everything on. Uh, have a good one. But uh, we did uh, hear you a little bit this morning here on uh, forty K before GKI seven three. All right, Jimmy. Seventy three to you as well. N four K R O. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to switch my antenna orientation back. There's the antenna and it goes up and then it drops off over, right over here somewhere. And I think I'm going to reset it to east-west and see if that makes any difference on the, on the uh, transmit. Because I should be doing better than that on 10 watts. And... Uh, So we'll see. I also might hook up the external power so I can bump this to 15 watts. I think I can do 15. Yeah, I've got an external power connector there. So I think I might do AC and just see if I can get up to 15 and get him a little better. I know it. 
din Tecea a ajuns la noi, pentru că interesul That was Antonio Carlos Jobim here on Jazz from the Left. And before that, the Cal Jader Quartet. We also heard from Christian McBride and started off with our... All righty. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I, um, I gave you a couple of takeaways. First of all, the small... Let me see if I can find it here. The small RG174. And let's compare that to RG... 8x. All right, there's RG8x as you can see, and here's the 174. And 174 has BNC connectors, which is fine. And this is professionally made, uh, commercially made by Soda Bean. And I love the antenna and have gotten some good, made some good contacts on it. But you have to keep in mind when you're doing QRP work, you got to have everything just right. And I believe. In this case, having a high loss cable, no matter how portable it is, is just not in your favor. The second thing is that you need you need to get your antenna hung up correctly. I think I'm a little too high on the soda beam. It needs to be about 22 feet, and I'm up about 30, which affects the SWR. My SWR was about 1.6 to 1, which was great, and uh, the Elecraft has a built-in tuner, so it will let you tune uh, the uh, the antenna um, and tune out any loss that the, is in the antenna, which is again um, not improving your power outage; it's just protecting the the uh, transmitter. So, um, if you have any comments, uh, ideas, thoughts, opinions, don't hesitate to share them with me here, and I'm going to uh, hook the um, Yesu FT818 up next, and we'll try. I thought I had enough wire stuff here to do um, another wire configuration, but I think what I'll do instead. So you want to be looking for this. Is I'm gonna I'm gonna try the the Moonraker. The Moon oops Moonraker is a loop Delta loop. I guess you call it loop antenna. And this is their version two. It's got a little tuner in here, and where it plugs directly into the back of the radio. So we're going to hook this up to the FT818 Yesu, and we'll see if we can make any contacts. To be honest with you, it's it's worked pretty good for listening. It's got like an 18 to 20 inch loop here, and I'll show you that configuration. So hopefully you uh, will have some success with that on some further. QRP work out here in the woods. Thanks for watching.